Military operations in the skies over Libya enter a third day. Over the weekend, a coalition of forces, including the United States, France, and Britain, struck targets across Libya. Officials say the airstrike succeeded in weakening Muammar Gaddafi's air defenses. At least one cruise missile struck Gaddafi's compound in Tripoli. Coalition forces also targeted Gaddafi's ground forces outside the rebel stronghold in Benghazi. Despite the strong military response, Gaddafi is vowing to fight a long war against the ally forces. For more, we are joined by CBS News military analyst Mike Lyons. Mike, good morning to you. Good morning, Toronto. Is the U.S. at war with Libya? Uh, no question we're at war. I mean, we have uh, enforced a no-fly zone, but we had to put in place attacks on Libya in order to do that. So uh, by taking out the anti-air defense missile systems, by attacking ground forces that are there, uh, we, you know, we kind of got around it. But fundamentally, we're at war with Libya right now. We've set the stage to have this no-fly zone work. But to do that, we had to attack that country. Last night, Gates said he's going to turn over control of the operation to either the French, British, or NATO in the next few days now. What does that mean for the U.S. role in this operation? I don't think we're going to take a back seat necessarily. I think, first of all, only the U.S. could have done this kind of job. There's no way that these other countries of the world could have gotten together very quickly and destroyed what's been destroyed in the past 24 to 48 hours there. So that's a key part of this mission. But I think what we want to do is take more of a back seat, let French, let British uh, commanders have much more responsibility over the air, making decisions on what they attack on the ground. Admiral Mike Mullen was on Face the Nation this morning, did not have a clear idea as to where this operation was going. Take a look. I can't say exactly how long it's going to, uh, th that the military part of this w will be in effect. Uh, and I think it's for others to determine where this goes long term. Is there a clear situation out of this conflict? Yeah, there really isn't. Uh, the best thing that, uh, that the Libyan dictator can hope for is possibly a stalemate at this point. Or what he does is he turns up the ground war. What's to say now that he decides to unleash his forces to go after those civilians, go after those rebel forces, and dares us to try to, sh to shoot him out of the sky again? So, you know, this, this, this could be the worst scenario. It just depends on what's kind of going through his mind right now. Gaddafi promises a long war. What can he do to harm U.S. and allied forces? Yeah, what he could do is start, uh, he's got uh, cases of mustard gas he could deploy. There's so many different things that could happen. He could start slaughtering civilians. Now, again, he won't win in the long run. Eventually, the international community will come after him, but he can create a, a lot of damage that will go a long way in that part of the world. Gaddafi's compound was hit, officials saying that he is not a target. Should we be reading between the lines here? No, we've got to be very careful. If all of a sudden we decide to target him in a civilian complex with his family, that, that would be a bad scenario for the U.S. Now, if he's there at military complexes expecting things, then he's, got, he's going to get what's coming to him. But right now, for us to, to try to even have any illusion that we're trying to target him would be a bad thing. Under a U.N. resolution, the idea here to establish this no-fly zone and to protect citizens of Libya. I want to take you back to the Gulf War, and we've talked about sure. this before. Under that resolution, take out Iraqi forces that were in Kuwait. But the question then, do you also take out Saddam Hussein? Fast forward to now. Take out Muammar Gaddafi or let him stay? No, I think, I think right now the situation has to play out and he stays as long as he survives. Let, the, let's, let's see what the regime does on the ground. Let's see what the people do in Libya. You know, the difference between that no-fly zone then and now is we had control of the ground then. This time we didn't. We had to make these attacks to create that no-fly zone. But we've got to let this thing play out in, in a manner that the Libyan people are going to be more satisfied with. We've been talking before about European nations taking the lead here. Is prolonged military activity in this country an option for those countries? I'm not sure for either the French or the British at this point in time, but uh, they didn't have the resources to do the initial attack like we did before. But they want to get involved because so much of their oil does come from Libya. They have a natural interest. They've got an immigration problem. There's Libyan citizens that live in those countries. So from, from their perspective, it is mo much more of a national security interest that this, the, the situation in Libya is much more stable. think troops will be on the ground long term in Libya from the U.S.? I think troops will be on the ground. Not sure they'll be long term, but I think uh, there's no question that once the infrastructure gets destroyed, you'll see international forces, you'll see Blue Helmet United Nations forces or something, and possibly U.N. U.S. forces will be part of that. You're going to have to have a security mission that's going to help with the rebuild and the reinfrastructure of Libya. Is that something that the U.S. can handle with 150,000 troops right now in Iraq and Afghanistan? I, I don't think, I think it's the biggest challenge this president feels, and I think that's why he was reluctant to initially get involved. I think the fact that this policy changed so quickly in the last week, you know, gave pause for him to think that, you know, we're very much stretched in right now. Perhaps we'd, we'd, we have a small force that goes there. Um, but if you're going to put 50, 75,000 troops in Libya, we're going to have to get help from other countries. CBS News military analyst Mike Lyons on the show this morning giving us some insight. Mike, thank you so much. Thanks, Terrell.